privilege and honor to have been taught my trade, which built my skilled career by the sacrifices and with the integrity of all the veterans, my supervisors, other journeymen, and fellow apprentices during my 15 years in naval ship repair. The time shared with the active duty personnel working together to keep our fleet in tip-top shape encouraged my understanding of why we are a nation with freedom and open dreams that can be reached with our own hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. My name is Keith and I'm here repairing America one project at a time. In our last episode, we got the gearbox mounted onto the ways. And Pearl's looking pretty good. I'm going to bring you in a little bit uh, closer here in a minute so that you can see I've cleaned all the bores for all the bearings, the shafts, and the shift rods. All, all the ports in here. I haven't tapped out any of the oil fills or any of that, but I'll be doing that as well. But I wanted to start by cleaning up those bores because we're going to start repairing gears, splines, clutches, and brakes. And we all remember this shaft here. This is the, this is the gear that was spinning freely on the shaft because the, the double keyway that's in here, the keys were sheared off. There's galling on the shaft here and galling in the gear. It feels tight out here, but when you put it in there, you can see how I can feel this gear rocking slightly sideways or whatever. It it's nowhere. <clears throat> it is nowhere close. <clears throat> where'd my where'd my walks go? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Testing one, two, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, with this gear all the way in there, it, there's no way that this gear is to be considered safe or even close to lasting a duration or a period of time. Because if this doesn't fit on there really nice and snug and there's a positive fit for the gear to the shaft and tension to those two keys there, we'll end up having the same situation. You know, who knows? The, the signs uh, of the, this lathe, in the, it, it, it's almost like a chuck key was left in the chuck spun around, caught on the ways, sheared off this shaft, and probably all this damage probably came all at the same time. It's only my observation. It's kind of hard. Uh, you just can't, you can't look back in the past and, and tell all that. This gear is good. Uh, the teeth and everything else are really good on here. And the keyways really aren't destroyed. It's just the bore itself. And the keys still look like they're going to be manageable. I'm going to make sure and double check on that. We're going to make a new shaft. So we got splines, we got keys, we got heat treating, and we got grinding. That means that tool post grinder that's been in a box forever. I need to get it out and get it set up and get operational. And so this is going to jumpstart getting a lot of other stuff going as well. Plus, we need to go over to the surface grinder. We need to pull out the drive motor on that, change out the bearings because we had bearing noise in there. Remember I in our past videos when I first moved that on over and I started using it, shortly we had to just shut it off because we had bearing noise. I slacked the belts and everything else and the noise is in the main drive motor. So we just got to take care of that because we're going to have some we're going to have some use for the surface grinder as well in our tooling even because I'm going to be making collars to go in between cutters so that we're going to be able to gang mill um, our spline and things like that. Things that 
you got coming up. I know that they're going to happen. I already got plans in my head of how I'm going about it. Um, this is a piece of uh, 4130. And that's what I chose to make my spline shaft out of. And I've got a couple parts that I can go ahead and I can cut out of this. I will cut it and I will be following through and I'll be making probably two shafts at one time. So if I have any issues uh, along the way or I get one that fits a little better than the other, then we put that one in. All right, on the same line of thinking, I, I knew that that, that that takes care of that, that lower shaft. The drive shaft that comes up above that shaft, which is our main input of power. Remember, we had that makeshift clutch. Okay, this piece of cast was rolled over where this shift fork comes in here. And this side here was replaced. So somehow that got munged or damaged uh, a long time ago. And um, I don't really know how they could have possibly damaged that but um they did this clutch or i mean it's a, it's a clutch when it pulls out it eng engages the clutch that's on the back of the the lathe here where the main pulley is but when you pu push the lever down it engages the brake the brake housing gets pressed in here all right and it's cup or cone and i'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here i'm just kind of explaining what my first repair projects are going to be on on the gearbox here so we're going to get into some real machining and we're going to we're going to be stepping back in time um when i was doing videos that were a little a little bit more into the actual machine work itself and kind of showing you how I go about it. We're going to be redoing the brake lining on this. And we're going to be turning a new housing. This has got some irregulars in the surface. And I'm looking at the amount of... Just like a taper on a propeller, you have draw. Well, your, your, your amount of, of contact area and your travel of your shoe and where it's going to go to bottom out and where it's going to be to be effective and also the amount of travel that it's going to take to um it, th these are all adjustable uh, in the linkage as far as how much clutch you can engage and how much brake you can engage and this thickness and this engagement on the brake here is actually how 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 new we're going to make that and how much wear this actually was and actually if it did it, it, you know it, right now this is in about a sixteenth of an inch or so so I know that it's probably got at least 30 thousandths per side wear on it already just because I, I would anticipate that the, the shoe would be flush with the outside before um, uh, when it was brand new, I should say. Um, this has also been removed once before and also the set screw wasn't quite put in there and that was slightly spun in the housing. It still feels tight and I had to press it out, but at one time or another it was, uh, it was disassembled and we know that some work had to go on here because there's some um, engineering. <laughs> um, new piece of ductile iron, or you know, ductile iron. Uh, heavy impact ductile is what I'm using. Um, I like it. It turns and it makes nice components. And that's going to be one of those pieces there. And... This, this hub is actually the diameter of the other side of this hub here. This assembly of the shoe has actually got a set screw in here and then that presses off on a key. And you make this, this is actually, this is actually three pieces. There's a plug that goes in the end here that gets a cross pin that joins this outside part with the inside ring and the small shaft. And that's, once you pin it, then that is part of the shift shaft and the fork here is actually what moves in and out the clutch and engages the brake also. Um, so another thing I'm going to be doing here in the next day or so is I'm going to be clearing off the front bench there and we have the, the taper attachment 
we have the apron and we have the quick change gearbox and I'm going to move those over to the side because I want to be able to lay out this linkage that we're going to be working on so that we have all the components and we can see it all out in the spread just like the drawing in the book and then we're going to be looking at it how it fits up into the case here all right I want to bring you in just so you can see how I polish up those bores we're going to be cutting up this and then we want to go ahead and we want to dismantle. I want to take this brake assembly apart so that we have all the components for the brake out so that actually I can say, okay, this is going to be this part here. This is going to be that part there. And with this disassembled, I'm going to be able to see the dimensions of the brake material because I'm going to be purchasing new brake material and the rivets uh, and all the hardware that we're going to need to assemble this and then re return a brand new brake. Okay, you really can't, you can't see every bore in here, but you can see the uh, surface in a couple of these here that show you that the cross rods here, actually down, down here in the very bottom, <clears throat> through looking through that port, you can see that, that, that is the bore that holds the back of the shifter that will be shifting the cog back and forth on on this gear here um and then these ports are bearing diameter for the races back here and i just lightly took a uh, a real light flapper wheel and i just took the paint uh off and just the oxidized surface there i didn't really take any diameter off of them and uh, it, it just made sure that there's no runs or paint or uh, anything in there that's going to hinder a good bearing fit. And um, so this the case is pretty well set, ready to go. Okay, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I've been asked already, but this white coating in here is nothing more than good quality Rust-Oleum white. And it's two coats I have in here. I have painted inside gearboxes with Rust-Oleum primers and paints, and they all hold up to oil. The Rust-Oleum holds up to oil and everything else on the outside of the gearbox. So there's, you know, there's no reason why it can't hold up on the inside as well. And gearboxes that I have put together in the past and I've opened up 20 years later and the paint is still good inside. Um, it, it, that's why I don't hesitate to use it. All right. I don't need to create an extra expense, uh, just to put a higher grade quality of a coating in here. Basically I was going to leave it original, but I figured while we're making new gears and doing fit ups and everything else, the lighter color here will make a better backdrop for your, the video. That's it. Okay. Let's examine the brake here and you can see you can see the different colorations on on the brake pad itself you can see that there's two grooves there they had that for oil um, oil uh, flow uh, so that it has a place to escape as well as a, a place to um, hang out and then when it the brake comes in and, and it makes contact uh you've get you've got it's like a wet break okay and so there's always this fluid being splashed up here as well but those two grooves that are there are actually in here and you can feel you can feel that that diameter is pretty close to what that was and the the areas that aren't grew uh, you know aren't the grooves the surface that makes contact you can actually see you can feel the wear just running your finger in and out of here and also if i held a scale like this on here and shine a flashlight you would probably see light through there there's a, there's an there's enough wear here that i can feel that i know that you'd be able to see some light there um and the the very far depth here we're probably about an eighth of an inch before this face here was to that face there. So it, it, it would still work. It still 
was functioning, you know, and when I test run it, it did have a, a break. I believe that it should come out and there's probably, like I said, about 30 thousandths wear there. But I wanted to give you a close-up visual of the components that we're, we're talking about. So we're going to remake this piece here. Now, we're definitely going to make the center of this hub. Those three pieces. Uh, okay, this bronze piece and this piece here are, are supposed to be one. But there's a center plug here that gets cross-pinned in here. And the reason why you have to have this insert in here is because the shaft is also keyed. This key right here is on the bigger part of the shaft. And the rod coming through here is to join uh, a thread adjustment on the throw okay um for the clutch so we'll have that we'll see that when i lay out the rod and this whole assembly all in one but right now i'm going to go ahead and pull that set screw off of there and i want to press the inner piece out of this outer piece and i also want to press out that so we're going to have the three different pieces that make up this brake assembly separated that's what i want to do right now I'm just removing the set screw that goes on this face. This is the only thing I, I think is really kind of holding this thing together. All right. And we're going to go ahead and take this up here like this. We'll put it like that. Is this deep enough? Yeah, that should be deep enough. I don't think this piece is in there that tight. No. Okay. Okay, this was the little slug that was in there. There was a cross line on here, and they had a cross line on this here showing its alignment. We know it's a tapered pin, so we just have to fit the taper <clears throat> in there to see which way it goes. And that way you can bore the, you can make this part bore it and be able to broach that key in there. And then you put this in there, and when you lock it in with the shaft and everything, then it locks that position, and you have a secure break assembly I'll have to look at the shaft again I don't know if it had another nut or another way of keeping it out here or not I had forgot what that looked like okay now we need to press that out of that piece there and okay that fits in there like that That'll go like that. Okay, I'm going to have to get a couple parallels here because the bottom horseshoe is not the uh, same size as the pivot there i found two bars here um and these aren't parallels these are just pieces of a uh, quarter by one coral flat bar <laughs> i wouldn't press on my uh parallels just in case you had any inquiries on that all right and i'll put this down there awesome Okay, and the reason why you press this on over this and lock it down the way it is is because you had to get in here and rivet the lining on this piece here. Now I'm going to be grinding loose all those rivets there and I'm pressing this apart because I want to know if this lining is actually a flat band wrapped around here and then turn the taper or if it's cone shaped uh, so that I can start figuring out how I'm going to create that. I, it does have a split line so I think it is a wrap of band right there and it may be straight a straight in, in it may be straight underneath and then this 
taper is machined in it after it's riveted on. All right. Okay, I wanted to give you a kind of a close-up of this piece here, and this is the sleeve that actually holds the brake material. All right, and this is made made to be rebuilt and put back into play. Um, and, and these rivets here, we're gonna take the mushroom part of the rivet off and we'll be able to put press them out. My suspicion is I just realized that that gap in there is freely let me put my scale in there. See the position of my scale in, in relationship to the, the liner material? The bottom or the bore or the diameter of the, where the wrap of brake material on there is square. So I'll be able to take and purchase this material in a strip thick enough, wrap it and attach it, and then return the diameter. So I'll have an option of reusing this, which I think I'm going to reuse this unless I destroy it, rebuilding it, which I don't really see how that would happen. But I'm psyched. It's easier to, it's easier to wrap. If you wrap, if you wrap a flat around a taper or a cone, you've got to have something much wider and you got to trim it off at the front and the back. <laughs> Right here, uh, it's like seven eighths of an inch on width, but I think I can buy the brake material in one inch width, so we can wrap that and then we can machine this face of it, machine the taper of it after we have it mounted onto the hub. Sight. All right, I want to conclude here. This, it, yes, it's been a, a talking video, but. We investigated what we have and we laid out a plan here and I wanted to include you in on my thinking of where my project is going with Pearl here and what I'm doing to make this um, step up the standards and the quality and bring it back to um, a great machine again. All right, we cut our two pieces to make a new spline shaft. We just want to have two just to have a spare backup as we're machining. Um, I hate to start over, so I don't mind having another one sitting around. And um, uh, we're going to be getting out our grinder. We're going to be clearing off the bench, and we're going to be setting that up. We have a piece of material to machine that out of. And this is the one solid piece that will be machined out of that piece of ductile. And then this right here, we can confirm our thickness and we can order our band material for the brake. And we should be ready to start rocking and rolling and getting into some, uh, some real machine work. All right. Until next time, get her done. <laughs>